Hello. So in this writing notes video, I'm going to give you another teaching strategy. This one is maybe a little more controversial, but I actually think in, in a lot of instances it does work well. And that's to essentially teach your students something other than what you want them to learn. Now this is, this is really built on the idea of knowledge transfer, that if you learn to do one set of skills or abilities, you should be able to apply those in different contexts. So there is a line of reasoning that, that says test your that says teach your students to do what you want to test them on. So if you want them to write solid essays, have them practice writing solid essays. If you want them to uh, take a multiple choice exam, give them multiple choice quizzes to practice. If you want them to do a short answer exam, give them short answer questions to practice. There's a good logic to that. There's a, a lot of cognitive science supporting that idea, but there's another school of thought, which is this one that I'm, that I'm uh, going to be talking about in this video, where you force students to learn the principles rather than to memorize particular content. So uh, my dad and my sister both went to Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, obviously not at the same time. My dad went in the 70s. My sister went in the, the 2010s. Um, late late aughts 20 into the 2010s but one of the things that my dad told me that they that they did and actually i think molly said she had these same sorts of experiences was like they would they would teach they'd spend the whole semester teaching the principles of designing a bridge for instance this is an engineering school and then the exam would come and it would be like design a rocket and I mean, people would do shitty. Like you could get you could get like a twenty percent on the exam and, and earn a C because it was graded on a curve, and everybody had done terrible. But the idea there is basically the goal is not we want you to memorize how to design a bridge. The goal is we want you to learn the principles of design, the principles of engineering that you can then apply to building a rocket or to building a dam or to building whatever it is. So this is the idea, is that you focus on skills rather than that particular isolated piece of knowledge. So how does this work in writing classes? Well, I have done this basically by asking students to work on different types of materials, to do different types of things. Um, so this for me, especially works well with analysis or evaluation projects. So I almost always have my students do a rhetorical evaluation. It's, I mean, it's a rhetoric class and that's one of the, that's one of the most direct papers you can do um, for a rhetoric class is, is a rhetorical analysis or evaluation. But I don't always necessarily have us look at examples of rhetoric in class because what I want my, I do want my students to learn rhetoric. And so we do discuss rhetoric, but what I want my students to learn is the principles of analysis and evaluation. So I may ask them to analyze and evaluate other things, non rhetorical texts. One that I really enjoy is music videos. So I will have students analyze music videos and then in one class period, we'll like talk about what are the components of this? What do these components signify? Um, so like I, I've shown um, Gangsta's Paradise by Coolio um, and we'll talk about like what's going on here. What genre of music is this? How do we know? What kinds of uh, what kinds of lyrics do we have? What kinds of imagery do we have, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So we have that analysis component, and then maybe the next class period I'll show two or three videos. So, for instance, I've paired um, uh, "Barbie Girl" by Aqua with 
um, self-esteem by the offspring and um, a Blue Rodeo song. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. Which is weird because I've seen the video <laughs> like 40 times. Um, Hasn't Hit Me Yet by Blue Rodeo. That's the name of the song. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You can choose whatever you want. Pick whatever whatever music videos you like watching and, and are willing to watch them as many section for as many sections as you're teaching. But that so we'll we'll do those three videos, uh, self esteem, Barbie Girl, hasn't hit me yet, and I'll have students compare and contrast them, and we'll we'll figure out which I'll have students basically answer the question which of these videos is best and why. So this is the evaluative component. Now, the idea here is that they can then take those skills, so take the analysis skills of breaking down a text and identifying its component pieces and figuring out how well they work, take those evaluative skills of assessing how good this text is at whatever it's supposed to be doing, and then you can apply those to rhetoric. So you can apply those to a rhetorical text that's attempting to persuade someone of something because the principles are the same. I've also done this with paintings. I've had students analyze and evaluate paintings. For me, that didn't work as well as the music videos, in part because with paintings, you kind of have to know a little bit more about art, and not all students necessarily do. But a lot of most students, in my experience, are going to know something about music and music videos. They're going to have some experience of this and some preferences. But this is sort of the idea, is that if you can get students, if you can give students a different task than the one that you're going to assess them on, but that teaches them the same skills, that helps them practice or develop the same skills, you can then ask them to demonstrate those skills not by reproducing the thing that you did in class, but by applying those newfound abilities in a different context. And hopefully, ideally, that indicates a sort of increasing mastery of those skills.